Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our very first ever Make It Simple TV. My name is Heather Porter. I am co-founder of Autopilot Your Business. Now, my fabulous co-host and other co-founder of Autopilot Your Business is here alongside with me, Andrew McCauley. How are you, Andrew? Hey, Heather. Hey, everybody. It's great to be on this call, our very first Make It Simple TV call. It's um going to be one of these ones we're going to do regularly every single week and we're going to have a different guest every week talking about all things that are cool. That we are. Now, we came up with the concept of Make It Simple because Andrew and I have traveled around the world working with loads of speakers on the road and while doing that we met a, a whole bunch of amazing people, authors, speakers, TV personalities, mindset gurus, fitness gurus, you name it. And um, since we started Autopilot, we've been really busy with our own business. So we haven't had a lot of time to connect with some of our previous peoples. And so what we're doing is we're using this as a really cool excuse to actually get reconnected to some of the people that we know and to allow you guys to be a fly on the wall to hear some amazing life and business lessons that these people have come up with and since we are kicking this off this is our very first one and we are in fact using Google Plus and Google Hangouts we thought it would be the perfect time to bring in a special guest named Elaine Lindsay now Elaine is a Google Plus guru and uh, she basically is in 35 almost 35,000 circles so this means that people from all over the world have added her into about 35,000 circles, which is huge. She has her own Google Plus uh, TV show, which is Business Banter Plus TV, and she's also uh, great at optimizing your online business and performance. She's a speaker. She's an amazing, amazing woman. Welcome to the show, Elaine Lindsay. Thank you. You're going to give me a fat head. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite the intro. Well, you know, you deserve it. You, you are amazing. And, and guys, we have basically started something really amazing with Elaine called the Online Master Plan Series, which we'll tell you a little bit more at the end of the show. And, and so we know Elaine really well. She, our, our Google Plus accounts were an absolute disaster. <laughs> we had multiple accounts. They were all over the place, and we're still <laughs> cleaning them up. And so um, Google Plus is not an easy thing. But Elaine, you know what would be great is if you actually start by telling us a little bit about your business and why you chose to go into this field. Okay, okay. Um, basically, uh, it, it's funny, but my early story is almost like yours, Heather. I started uh, doing websites uh, sort of on a whim, okay, way, way back. I was an interior decorator, and through life challenges, um, I have mobility issues, it became much more difficult for me to get around so I wanted to do something that was still creative and let me sort of have full reign and I fell into website design I spent some time with a what's called a regional councillor here municipal government and started designing websites for some of the councillors um, very quickly saw that having a beautiful website was kind of irrelevant if nobody could find it you know, it could be the most beautiful site in the world. If people can't find you, who cares? So I wandered early in the 2000s into search engine optimization and really found that it was great because I was able to sort of pull my mind in as well. I don't just like creative. I like to do all kinds of stuff. And uh, 2005, got into LinkedIn. 2007, got onto Facebook because my children don't live near me. And it was an easy way to kind of stalk them without annoying the hell out of them <laughs> on the phone every day. I very quickly saw that Facebook was actually a really good marketing tool for my clients. And I started getting them to use it once the pages came out. And from there, it was just, uh, you know, different people said, oh, you're always schmoozing. My, my background is, is a bit checkered. I've done all kinds of funky events and, and work with uh, David and Ed Mervish out of Toronto doing the cast and crew closing parties for Les Mis. And just all kinds of really offbeat stuff. And I love to talk to people. So I know a lot of people. People said to me, you're such a schmoozer. Why aren't you just doing social media? I said, well, that's not really a job, is it? And I found out, yeah, in fact, it was a job. So I 
found out where the best place was to go and I mentored with Mari Smith for a few years. I went to the Relationship Marketing Institute and something that had basically rung true with me from the beginning was you had to find your own niche. So I did. I was very lucky. I got into Google Plus on day three and I'm in heaven. I, I heart Google big time. Google Plus is my playground. <laughs> Why is Google Plus so amazing? Why, like, what is the draw card with it? Because it's kind of new, and people are still asking that question. So tell us why you think it's such a good tool. It, it's true. It, it is still really new. It's really funny. The past, I would say, about three months, maybe four, a lot of the longtime marketers and other online big guys have suddenly realized that. One of the features here, Hangouts on Air, is absolutely amazing, and they're all jumping on the bandwagon, which I'm really happy with because it means more people are coming to Google+. We have a huge, thriving community, and in all honesty, my 34-plus thousand people, it's not really that big. I have friends that are musicians and authors, and they have millions, so it's a it's a very different sort of platform. We're here because we want to meet more people. We want to share our passion. And we're not limited by 140 characters. We're not limited by having to have people friend us back in order to see what's happening. It's an asymmetrical platform like Twitter. So you have a lot more flexibility. More than that, the Hangouts give us the next best thing to being there. We get to see each other's emotions. We get to, you know, understand the people that we're interacting with in a very different way than flat news walls like Facebook and, and Twitter. As much as a stream goes through and you see images and you can see video, not the same thing from me looking you in the eye. Hey Elaine, if um if someone's watching today and they're like, well, you know, and I've heard about Google Plus a lot. I'm sort of going to make the jump, but I'm not sure. What would be the first thing that you would say to them that they should think about when they come onto Google Plus? What What would be the one thing that you think would be the best thing or best piece of advice you could give them when they're starting out on their Google Plus account? To start out, on your About tab, there's a lot of boxes to fill out. My suggestion, fill them all every single one of them. They have a reason. And you know, you have to realize Google Plus is a social layer of the top two search engines in the world. That's got to mean something. We're very much tied to search in Google Plus. By putting all of your bits and bobs, and that's really everything you do, especially if you're a business, get your personal profile up, start interacting with people, Add your company page, and then people will interact with you. I really believe it's about the relationships that we create, and that's what fuels us in Google+. We each want to help others get a hand up. I'm very, so, I guess um, I'm really uh, inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say was, what, what has been some examples that you've been able to achieve from connections that you've made, relationships that you've built on Google+, what are some examples that you've been able to, to do or you know, garner from these, these relationships on G+. I got to speak at Google in Boston to a social HR camp, which is all HR people and recruiters, uh -huh. about Google+. Now, how cool is that? Yeah. yeah. In Toronto as well, I've spoken in uh, Windsor and Las Vegas. I was on stage with Mari Smith. Google+, Plus has given me not just the platform, but it's allowed people to see what I'm all about with no limitations. Mm. If I want to post a novella on here, I can. Mm -hmm. And more more to the point, you know, we've we've early on, we all realized that as much as video chatting and being able to see each other was really cool, you still want to meet people in person. So we started what they call hurls, which is the hangout in real life. Mm -hmm. I've been to one in New York with 70 plus other people where we actually got to visit Ground Zero 
and that was really powerful. Going on photo walks with some of the greatest photographers in, in any country and seeing the world through their eyes. I used to take pictures like jigsaw puzzles. I was lucky mm -hmm. if I got, you know, it, four pictures to take one, get one person together and we had to paste them. <laughs> Being on Google Plus, you get into the communities with the photographers and they're willing to help you mm -hmm. and teach you how to do what they do. So and how do not you just photographers? How do you actually um, find people to hang out with? Because if you have your account, I mean, all I've seen is there's a big search bar at the top, but how do you actually find communities and, and kind of meet people on Google Plus? Well, when you start out, and, and this is really important because this met, to me, it, it right across the social realm, what you want to do, you want to connect with people, then you have to reach out. Go into the search bar, either start with your local area, you know, type your, your city, type your country, type what interests you in that search bar, and it's going to show you. You have the options of everything, people and places and locations. Click on the people and pages, and you'll find people and, and pages that are interested in what you're interested in. This take, leads us right to circles. Uh, Google Plus has what we call circles. Okay, circles are, it's like a built-in contact management system where you put the people that you have followed and you can sort them into as many circles as you want. You can call the circles whatever you want and the only people that see those names are you or anyone that you share that circle with. What that means is if you pull together, say, at the start, 10 people every week, and you check out what they're posting, you can decide whether or not they're in keeping with your values or your business or maybe their prospects. So you can move them to a circle for prospects or in some cases you move them to a circle to we have nothing in common. Uh, this is how you build and it's really how you build anywhere. You have to reach out and see what other people are doing, what their interest is because let's face it, it's about them. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. Hey, what um, what sort of time frame? We get this question all the time. How long should I spend on social media? How long should I spend on Facebook? Blah blah blah. What sort of time frame would you suggest to be effective um, that they should spend on Google Plus per day or per week? Well. One thing I, I say that, you know, I guess in some ways it's different from other people. Social media is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So if you set aside, I would set aside early on half an hour a day to be sure that you're not only engaging people, but you're actually reading what they're putting out. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not enough to just plus one or on Facebook like something. If you don't actually read what they're saying, you're not finding out anything about that person. So how do you build a relationship? So in the beginning, I think you need to spend a little bit more time, but within a few weeks, you can see very easily whether or not you and someone have something in common. If they don't ever respond to your comments, if they don't plus one anything you do, if they don't share anything you do, well, cut your losses and move on. It doesn't work with everybody. There is a public setup where you can jump into a live hangout. Okay, sometimes it's a little frightening when you go into a hangout in public, but you can, you know, pick a circle of people that you think look really nice, invite them to a hangout. Just, you know, pop in and say, hi, this is me, this is what I do. That's how you get out there. You really have to initiate. Okay, and to me it's all about initiating. If you just sit there or sit back and, and watch what other people are doing, they're not going to get a feel for your flavor. Mm. And it's really about your flavor. So, um, question going forward, you know, Hangouts, there's all this talk about Hangouts are the new webinar, people are getting rid of webinars and not doing webinars so much, they're doing Hangouts because just like we're seeing now our faces on, on the screen, but we can also share our screen. If we wanted to share my computer screen right now, I could go and do that. If I wanted to go and play a movie from YouTube, I could go and show everybody a movie on YouTube right now too. So where do you think the future is for this sort of interaction as far as businesses go too? 
I think this is perfect for business and this is part of the reason that I, I like to speak to HR people. You know, when when you live in different climes, you know, Heather, right now you've got beautiful summer. I'm yeah. up here in the you know, cold, cold north. This time of year, we don't always want to leave our homes. You know, it was a balmy minus 31 with the wind chill this morning. Not really in the mood to go out. However, as an HR recruiter, I could actually interview five, five to nine people in a hangout and get a, a feel for, are they a team player? Do they interrupt the other people that are talking? Are they offering something of themselves? Like, you, you get a, a whole flavor of people because within 8 to 12 minutes of being in a hangout, everybody kind of lets their defenses down. It's not something that you're conscious of, it's just what happens. So that's for HR. We've even had hangouts where you know, deployed people get to do their homework with their children. You can actually share documents in a hangout, work on the same document, and in my case, I'm a grandmother. I have two grandkids that absolutely love hangouts. One likes me to read him stories. There's an app for that. He gets <laughs> to pick the book in the library and he can decide, you know, what he wants me to read him. The seven-year-old, well, she likes to play you know, tic-tac-toe and she likes to run around and erase everything I've put up. <laughs> and that was suggested by one of the founders of Hangouts, Chichu, something he did with his kids. So there's something for everyone. I'm talking about things that are more personal, but you can actually, you know, take that and relate it to a business. You could use that drawing app to do mind maps and, and uh, structural settings for your organization. Do a flow chart. You know, make sure everybody's being included in what you're doing. A big office that has, say, satellite offices in Sydney and Hong Kong, well, sometimes the people in the satellite offices feel very disconnected from the main corporation. Why not do a weekly hangout? Everybody can get together. Do you know there is a pool game in here? You can get to know people and play pool at the same time. I'm going to ask you about apps in a few minutes. Yeah. Um, but what I do want to what I do want to um, ask you about is you said that you know you can have eight to ten people in a hangout. Now, in this situation that we're on, there's three of us on the screen. There's nobody else that's uh, on the screen or, or available to be on the screen. But people are watching us from either our Google Plus page or our Make It Simple TV page or wherever else we put it, Facebook. Um, so you can actually embed these videos on a whole range of different sites as well. Tell us a little bit about what is the what is the limit of how many people can be on a hangout? How many people can be on a the bottom part where they they're invited and they can speak? And how many people can actually watch and watch. hang out? And how big can you really get? That's a really good question, and that's um, there's two very distinct pieces. You can do hangouts where you just invite people. Now both pieces I'm going to talk about the limit is ten people in total, so you and nine others can come into a Hangout. Hangouts on air, which is what's happening right now, are actually broadcast, and, and this is the cool piece, okay? You're a small business, this will be broadcast for you, and it's automatically uploaded to your YouTube channel, which is connected to your Google Plus account. It's all done for you. So there it is. While it's happening, it's live, you can see it, and when it's finished, you can take it from your YouTube, download it, cut it up, do whatever you want with it. It's there for your use, it's available to you. So this is really a fabulous medium for all kinds of business. Mm. If you just want to start a little show, you have a show, I have a show, if somebody wants to come in and do some business coaching or perhaps they uh, even teach music, you can use Hangouts for that. There is a company, uh, Chef Hangouts, that does teaching of uh, great, like four-star chefs will teach you how to cook. This is a monetized system and they will give you lessons so that you're actually working in your kitchen with your stove and your bowls and what have you and they help you work out some fabulous recipes. So do they, actually, do they actually see your kitchen as you're cooking? 
Yep. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. And and it's great because that way the chef can direct you like maybe you're not cutting properly or you're not being safe in what you're doing. They can absolutely talk to you and talk you through where you're going in your recipe, which is just amazing. And he said, and he said it was monetized. So so let me guess people are paying for the privilege to have this chef basically into their kitchen virtually. Yeah. Um, and it's not a public thing, it's a private thing, it's probably hidden it's behind private. a membership level or something like that. And then people sign up, <clears throat> maybe a monthly subscription, and every week the chef comes into the kitchen, or all ten kitchens at once, basically. Absolutely. And he keeps an eye on who's doing what and how they're cooking, and uh, well, that's a great way to really you, spread the services, one to many, I like that. You could do that for like a fitness coach, couldn't you? So if you oh, yeah. had questions <laughs> on your form or whatever when you do uh -huh. workouts. Yeah, I'm yep. actually a part already of a uh, women's mastermind group that is membership only and uh, there are hangouts every week. Wow. wow. So, so was, you said, you're sorry, Heather, um, you said there's 10 people that can be invited to that hangout, but yes. there can be multiple people watching it without being participants yes. in it, is that right? Absolutely. The hangout, the hangout on air is the one that everybody can watch. Now, let me just quickly say, the Hangout that's not on air, you can actually start it, and 100 people, up to 100, can chat in the chat box. Only 10 can actually come into the Hangout, but if you start the video chat, you can actually have up to 100 people talking to the people that are in the Hangout. Wow. If you do it on air, the Hangout on air gives you the ability to not only have it run live in your stream, it will run on your YouTube channel and it gives you the embed code so you can embed the live show on your site, on your blog, wherever you want. There are a number of third-party apps now that are actually embedding the Hangouts into Facebook because they don't have anything that works like Hangouts. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, so your watching public could ultimately be millions. Mm. It's it, you know depending on where you have it and what kind of a following you have, there really are no limits there. Yeah, because we actually have it on our website, and that's for probably a lot of you guys watching this right now. You got the link in the email or our Facebook post, and you're watching it there. But you also we have it on our Google Hangout page, and also inside Facebook we use um, Lead Pages, and we actually Lead Pages has a cool little template for Hangouts, and they just put that straight in. Um, Andrew, you were saying earlier I wanted to talk to you about apps, and I did too. I lit up when I heard that. What's the deal with these apps you keep talking about? The apps inside the Hangout? Yeah, how do they yeah. work and, and yeah. how do you <laughs> put them into your Hangout? Okay, when you come into a Hangout, okay, you're going to have a menu on the left-hand side of icons. And you get a few to start that are usually, uh, you have your chat box, so there's a chat inside the Hangout that only the people in the Hangout can see. Then there's screen share, so we can share our screens of something, you know, some other whatever you have on your desktop or your laptop, or you want to show somebody uh, a diagram or photos or what have you, you can use the screen share. There's also what's called Hangout Toolbox. Shout out to Moritz and German and the guys. Way to go. Hangout Toolbox gives us these beautiful lower thirds that you see at the bottom of the window. You don't have to have any graphic experience. It actually gives you an open box with your name, an area for a tagline, and you can, if you have a logo, you can add your logo. You'll see Heather has a logo, Andrew has a logo, I have a logo. That's all in the generic lower third that you can add by yourself. Pick the color that you want for the stripe at the top of the box. And that's all free. In that Hangout Toolbox, you also have the ability to control the sound in your part of the Hangout. So for anyone that's hard of hearing, you can actually turn people up. If, if perhaps their uh, mic isn't really loud, you can turn it up for yourself within that Hangout Toolbox. There's also Comment Tracker. There's Google Effects, which I see someone's about to use. <laughs> it's really interesting. And oh, sure, why not? There you go. Google Effects. <laughs> Google Effects is a really fun little app 
And I'll show you, this is, this is what my grandkids think this is the best thing since sliced bread because they get to see grandma look really funny. There's also what they call randomizer that will just change what you have on. Oh, that one's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and move it around and give you all kinds of, of weird goodies. This came out because people wanted something sort of fun and interesting to do in a hangout. And I think, let me see if I can get to it. You can offer somebody a birthday cake with a little candle for their birthday. And we even have sound. Yay. Just in case you're being really funny, you need a clap. Or perhaps things are getting a little deep and desperate. <laughs> <laughs> and they so, come so out Elaine, with news. Elaine, what's, um, uh, I do mean to cut you off, but... I do want you to give us your top three apps because these apps are always coming out. There's always new apps coming out. There's always changes and stuff like that. Um, when you finish up wrapping up what you're talking about, I want you to give us your top three favorite apps at the current time because I know that probably changes on a oh, weekly yeah. basis. Yeah. Um, top, top of the list won't change ever Hangout Toolbox. It has uh -huh. so many uses. Now, one thing that's an app, but but you have to set it up ahead of time. When you're setting up your Hangout on Air, something that we didn't even talk about, but now you can schedule your Hangout on Air way in advance, and you can get all your links right at that time when you're scheduling. Beautiful thing now, when people say yes or maybe, not only does it go on their calendar, but they can then take the links as well. So they can choose to watch you on YouTube, watch you in Google+, or they can take the embed link and go watch you on their own website, which I think is phenomenal. Mm. That's, a real, that's a real boom for sure. One of the newer ones is called Control Room, and it's specifically for Hangouts on Air. Want everybody to know these aren't just for Hangouts on Air. Any Hangout has a bunch of apps. The fun ones like Google Effects and Storytime and all of that are really useful. YouTube, actually I'm going to say I think Google Drive is probably my third favorite. So I've got Hangout, Toolbox, Control Room, and Google Drive gives you the ability to not only work on documents but work on presentations, work on like a type of Excel sheet. All of that together within a Hangout. And I've done Hangouts for hours on end when uh, a partner and I have been working on uh, you know, some new document or we want to put up a new article, we're both working on a piece or we're setting out our content calendar. It's great to be able to work on it both together. The app that I won't count in those three because it's on the outside is called Q&A. So when you schedule that Hangout, if you click Q&A at the time, people can actually uh, ask questions ahead of time, before your event, and it goes on that event page, and it will, it will circulate live within the Hangout while you're on air. And, you know, as we all know, everybody loves the sound of their own name. So it's a great way to reach out to your customers and your prospects when you're in a hangout and you're answering their question, you can give a little shout out and you know, make their name known. Awesome. Very cool. Now I'd like to ask as we're starting to wrap up, what are your top three tips or pieces of advice for somebody that's wanting to use Google Plus in their business? Okay. Uh, first off, because Google's tied to search, Google Plus accounts and your information should be tied to your website and blog. It's what we call authorship and it now is verified through your email. You can get that from Google. All you do, type in the search bar authorship how and it'll take you right to the developers page. The second thing you can do is you can add what we call your hover card and that's your big cover photo that's on your personal profile or your business page add that to your website. People can interact directly with you and put you in their circles right from your website. The last thing I want to say is don't forget hashtags. 
hashtags work beautifully in Google+. And the real beauty is Google+, Plus will even help you. You can set up your account so that they will automatically add appropriate hashtags for you just in case you forget. Anything you do in Google+, Plus, keep your SEO hat on. Remember that what you do is in your niche, so get your keywords in there. Make sure you start your posts with a good title and make sure you fill out everything on that About tab. Wow. Oh, Annie, it's been great having you on here. And I want to thank you. It's always good hanging out with you because I think we're doing it a lot regularly on all sorts yeah. of different shows. Where, <laughs> where, where can people find out about uh, more about you and and, uh, and let us know a bit of the services that you offer so that if people are looking for assistance and you can offer it, then we'd love for them to go and connect with you. Absolutely. You can find me at trulsocial.com which is T-R-O-O-L social.com or barring that, elainelindsay.com. And if you just type the plus sign, Elaine Lindsay, all one word, it'll take you right to my Google account. Awesome. Nice. And, and earlier I mentioned as well that we're working on something with you called the Online yeah. Master Plan Series. And uh, we're literally just about to launch that. So if you guys are interested in, in actually finding out how to get access to Elaine's tutorials, and um, we're also teaching loads of other social media tips in this series, you can go to onlinemasterplanseries.com and pop your email address in there and we're going to be sending out some really cool free videos starting as soon as even maybe next week. So you don't want to out on that either. Um, any, you know what I'd love to ask Andrew as we're closing up too, I think that um, all business owners have really amazing advice, just life and business advice. So just in general, Elaine, is there something you can leave us on, um, a lesson that you've learned in business that you can share with everybody listening to inspire them in their businesses? Yeah, actually a really important lesson. I actually have it on the wall in my office. Just because you can do a thing does not mean you should. <laughs> Focus on your niche. You cannot be all things to all people. And, and that was the greatest lesson that I think I could ever learn. Wow. Well said. We can relate to that for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Gosh, um, thank you so much, Elaine, for joining us. This has been really fun having you on our very first Make It Simple TV. And um, any closing thoughts, Elaine, before we sign off? Well, I just want to say I'm really touched. I'm thrilled to be your, your first uh, ever guest on your show. And I'm really happy to see you guys are using Hangouts wonderfully. It's like so gratifying to see other people love what I love. <laughs> and and as you know, like I talk about Google Plus an awful lot. So, you know, anybody when you come on in, stick me in a circle. I'm more than happy. If you have a quick quick question, you wanna find something out, shoot me a note on Google Plus and I'll see what I can do. I'm sure you can answer all of those questions, Lane, because you've been our godsend when we've been setting up all of our stuff and as I said, we had so many different connections. We had all these YouTube channels and all these different oh. accounts. <laughs> yeah. You worked it out because we had no idea what was going on. So Yeah, one, uh, one last thing on to that end. People, if you don't remember your password, if you have a Gmail account, please ask for them to get it for you. Don't just create a new account. Having a lot of profiles, think about it. It really waters down your brand. It waters down your name. Therefore, it waters down your optimization. Don't do it. <laughs> Good advice. Now, if you want to be kept in the loop on our weekly Make It Simple TV so you don't miss a show, all you need to do is hop on over to aybguide.com and request our online survival guide, and we'll be keeping you up to date on our ongoing and, and upcoming shows and guests. And thanks again to all of you, wherever you are in the world, for joining us on this episode of Make It Simple TV. See you later. Bye.